I oh, say, what? I say, I say, Gabriel. Yes, Croshaw. Would you like to take part in a rape? <laughs> you have to Why say, not? You have to say no. No. That's the spirit. Hello, everyone. We're, we're playing Half-Life again. Did you uh, know, Gabriel, we've got hostiles? Do we? Yeah. Better go Are they to, rape? Better go to the doctor about that. Huh. What does that even mean? Are they rape? Well, I wasn't expecting the rape. Well, I'm glad to have discombobulated yeah, you so early in the video. I suppose nobody expects the rape, but otherwise it's just a date, really. So, last time, Gordon Freeman caused a big accident that blew everything up. Whoopsie doodle. And now the government of sending soldiers who are killing all the scientists. Uh, what a bunch of assholes. Typical government. This is what the Oregon militia were talking about. This was... they were trying to capture... The bird sanctuary to make scientists free Whoa, you from... Did you see that? Yeah, did he Can... grenade himself? I think someone grenaded him and it wasn't me. <laughs> Your tax dollars at work, Americans. Tisk, tisk. Look at these highly trained professionals. People asked us last week why we were doing the notoriously buggy Half-Life Source version. See something like that, you still have to ask? It's part of the fun, if you ask me. Mm. I didn't know it was notoriously. Which is the not notoriously bug? Which is the good version? If well, I wanted to go home and play this. Well, the uh, vanilla version, I suppose. The gold source version, the original build. Mm, okay. What's buggy about this one? I mean, it, that. Dude, all, the, all the bugs we've seen so far. Oh, uh, yeah. Uh, no. <laughs> you can't just shoot it over? Well, you can bypass that altogether. Oh. But you need, need to get your sprinty on. Of course, in Half-Life 1, we don't have the sprint function we had in Half-Life 2. We just have to not hold down shift. And run the wrong way along a conveyor belt. That's right, yeah, when the shift button was walk. Yeah, we established that. Why? Like, oh, I'm going to go through this environment slower. I saw there's a mod for Witcher kill, 2. That kill the boxes, kill the boxes, kill the boxes. They may contain stuff. You never know, you never know. See, in Half-Life 2, they standardized what look what the boxes that contain stuff look like. Yeah, and in Half-Life 1, it... I mean, they had they the little yellowy thing on them, didn't they? Yeah, they sort of... Hello. You sort of can't tell what boxes will have stuff in them or what won't. Why don't these guys have HEV suits? It'd be like fucking invincible. Funny thing is, in the expansion Opposing Force, where you play as one of the soldiers... Whoopsie doodle. Yeah. Alright, so that's just the fuck it and leg it strategy, is it? That scientist said, Take me with you, I'm the one man who knows everything! <laughs> nice try, science. <laughs> Go run through and draw out all the machine gun fire like yes, you're supposed to. Yes, in Opposing Force you play as one of the soldiers. Instead of a HEV suit, you're given a, a combat vest, like what these guys were wearing, and they all fun and it functions basically identically to an HEV suit. Amazing. It was impossible to like, work with cover with these guys, because they have got, have got such quick reflexes. Yeah, it's like, you know, when I go back and play like old Street Fighter and the game's just cheap, it's not sort of strategic and fun like the updates have made it. Yeah. And then you play this, and it's just the characters are just the reaction time is just so ridiculously instant. Yeah, the game just compensates by putting health everywhere. Yeah. <laughs> Forgot about that. <laughs> Hello, <laughs> machine chum. You will be avenged. Oh, Horace. Sorry. You have been avenged. <laughs> Your ghost is free to leave this place now. If you have any further complaints, please address them to the management. There's going to be some HR forms to fill out after this. Funny thing about the soldiers, you pick up on their radio chatter, and if it sounds a little bit weird, stilted and robotic, it's because um, they use a sort of simple speech synthesis thing where they recorded a bunch of words and strung them together into lines. Mm. So, and the reason they do that is to sort of um, use uh, different lines for the situation. So if, a, so if a human soldier sees an alien, they'll say something like, Squad, we got hostiles. But if they see you, they'll say, Squad, we got Freeman. Sounds like every fucking wrestling game commentary. Have you heard the uh, Black Mesa Tannoy? That does a similar thing. What's Black Mesa Tannoy? Yeah, sometimes you hear like a 
computerized voice oh. over the um, yeah, I don't know what the system. name of it was. I wonder if there are soldiers down there. <laughs> Do they notice grenades? Ah, oh, good on them. Yeah, they've got that going for them. Oh! Yeah, they've also got grenades of their own. Oh, that's just cheeky. Is it me or is the gravity on those grenades a bit wonky? Yeah. The grenades themselves, like, they're too big and they just... Oh, this is a grenade fight now, it seems. <laughs> Grenades no, for everyone! Boy. Grenade yeah. out! Throw a grenade down there. I will. Alright, that... Yeah, that... I think that absorbed some of your horizontal movement. Yeah, it's possible. Like, you, maybe you could curve the bullet like in Wanted. Yeah, just whoosh! Just go whoa, whoa, whoa. I'm like... going to assume that worked. Look! Look, it hit the wall! The twang! The, the theory is sound! Shit, we my cover. <laughs> Thanks for revealing that battery, though. Haha, you've destroyed my cover and given me health! All is as I have predicted. So I don't know if you've ever seen Ross Scott's excellent Freeman's Mind series, but uh, at this point in the game... Isn't he that guy you stole all your material from? Yes, but um, at this point in the game, this is the room we were in earlier with the conveyor belt yeah, going the wrong yeah. way. But when he got to this part in the game, he just sort of uh, mantled up onto that ledge and skipped a huge chunk of the level because you would be able to do that in real life that is sensible mm. who what where well, yeah. he was hiding in between the wall and that box what a cunning devil have you ever been playing hide and seek and like one of your cousins has jammed themselves in the most awkward position possible and you just sort of there's that beautiful moment where you make eye contact with them and they can't even move do you want to place a bet and see if this gun will fall to the ground after i break this box i bet it will Yay! You were right! You, well done. Way to go, physics engine. Kablooey. See, the melee combat in Half-Life is more like a gun that's got zero yeah, range. It's... Because you just see a bullet hole appear in front of you. And you're just always hitting the exact same spot. It's not the sort of tactile melee combat you might find in games such as Condemned. When did that sort of better... Well, well, actual still, melee combat well, there are still shooters that treat melee combat as like a zero range gun. Really? A lot of like, like you know, modern warfare and stuff. Mm. You just run up to someone and chica, chica, chica. wave your knife about in the vicinity of their back, <laughs> and they some and they die somehow. Knifey flaily. What is Blimey, this? This is a slow elevator. Mm. Da, 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 Good da, thing we weren't da, riding it with any soldiers, that would be awkward. <laughs> so, how, how's your guys' day been? Yeah, mine's been kind of a pisser, if I'm honest. Aliens, huh? Nuts. And now... And now there's some funky music playing. And soldiers... Alright, legit. Like, was that soldiers. two different soldiers, or what the fuck? That, yeah. Soldiers who really have problems with the concept of cover. Uh, you know what, bollocks to this. I'll just uh, heal up a bit. And then... Oh, look at the lovely scenery, isn't this nice? Well, nice uh, hanging out with you guys, see you later. <laughs> and that's that level. I presume they can't follow you down to loading. No, nothing is can use ladders. Only Freeman has mastered the art of ladders. Took him some work, because this is a, you know, a Quake Engine game. Where ladders years, yeah. are your biggest foe. Fifteen years studying yeah. in a laddish monastery. I'll oh, just secrets. use yet another load of health. All right. Oh, yeah. oh. oh it's an oh. Os oh, it's an osprey. Ah. 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 Ow! Uh, it looks like it tickled. Screw you guys. Yeah, they were um, repelling. Are we speed running now? They were repelling down that hole from your spray. You might as well at this point. If you just stop and try to fight all the soldiers, they'll just eat your health away. Let's save again before I start recklessly leaping around next to this spinning fan blade. It was kind of spinning slowly though. It looked like you could have just stood on it. These vents will take you to a whole bunch of areas we've already seen. Oh, hey, guy. I just fired a gun in a vent. In real life, that would have been a very poor idea. Yeah, your eardrums would have just fucking exploded. 
And here's the little kitchen that we glimpsed earlier. Uh. And here's someone who didn't have a plan. He thought, I know where I'll hide. In I'll hide kitchen. in this uh, fridge with the door that closes by itself and no opening mechanism on the other side of the door. No air holes. You know, I wonder if he had a scholarship to whatever university he got his PhD at. I wonder if that university feels a little bit gypped now. Yeah, there's going to be some reviewing of the internship program. Because, hmm. There's a slave down there. I'll leave him to his own devices. Maybe he's frustrated because he can't find the Doritos. <laughs> Doesn't even yet know the joy of Cool Ranch. That would end all this. Free the slaves with Cool Ranch. Crawling in the vent, I'm in my element. Gordon Freeman, six, five thousand. Can you grin? No. Are they going to notice you? Uh, Do they acknowledge the light at all? Yeah, I guess they noticed me. I don't know if it's because the light or just because the dodgy programming. Should have bopped the yeah, grating out and throw a grenade down there. I don't need that ammo. You never need ammo in this game. It's fucking everywhere. Yeah, have, f have fun shooting at an empty vent, lads. I guess a lot of the other research at Black Mesa was on ammo. Yeah, different means that's of storing the... it, different, you know, different places it can be sort of just rested. It's one of the weird things about this game. Well, it's like in Mad Max. There's one shotgun. You have it. That's it. There is one shotgun in that entire world, and yet there is ammo for it fucking everywhere. Yeah, sounds about right. The weird thing is that um, apparently firearm use and maintenance is such an integral part of Black Mesa life, you get trained in it in like the uh, hazard course, which is supposed to be about teaching you how to use your you know, environment suit. Mm. Uh, you know, incidentally, if, you know, just hypothetically, aliens from another dimension just happen to invade, it's probably a good idea we train you all in the use of assault rifles. Hypothetic, yeah, because... When I say all, I mean one of you. Because I mean, there's no one else besides no. you, not even the security guards who can use assault rifles. Not even, yeah, like... And, I mean, you know, we both shot guns. It's not like... You can't just do this. <laughs> Well, no. <laughs> Here's the mysterious vent that goes nowhere. I'm guessing huh. they were just trying to comply with OSHA or something. And they're just hoping the inspections wouldn't actually want to look inside the vent. The air conditioning just backs up there and cuddles. You can't shoot the grates out and drop down? Is that what you're supposed to do? No, nah, not there. Yeah. There's a specific way you have to go. Oh, here it is. Hey! Mr. Scientist. Remember this place? Yeah. We saw a security guard get sucked into that vent and horribly killed. Where is he now? One might ask. I'll just leave that guy to talk to himself. <laughs> for, while for, I, for him. Maybe he got dragged down here, and then the aliens were kind enough to clean up afterwards. He was mauled to death by that head crab. You know what? They probably just licked the whole thing clean. They were like, mmm, <laughs> blood. <laughs> and Wouldn't you? I suppose it'd be like the bowl after a chocolate cake if you were, you know, kind of just into human blood. I suppose. I mean, you wouldn't want to waste Although it. Although, why would an alien life form that evolved in another world in another dimension have a taste or the capacity to digest human flesh? Why would they be able to exist in an oxygenated environment? Mm -hmm. I guess they're carbon based then. You still talking? He's got a heck of a jaw on him. Okay. So that's uh, our introduction to the soldiers over. Now we won't see them again for a while. Hooray! As we return to the bowels of Black Mesa. Off to the silo. Because we just achieved our first objective, reached the surface, popped our head out, and like Punks of Tawny Phil, went, fuck this shit, and popped it straight back down again. Bullets. Bullets are everywhere. <laughs> That takes a while. Yep. Hello, launch bite. Haha. Uh -huh. That bull squid oh. was firing spit at that head crab. That's some fucking eyesight those things have got. Let me help you out, bull squid mate. There, we're pals now, aren't we? Bloop. Yes, that, that's Bloop. how he says I love you. Weirdly uh, slow uh, projector. Uh, 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 uh. See, the uh, machine gun's like a pretty good universal weapon, but it's a really shit at long range. Because it's a submachine gun, mm -hmm. more than anything else. And it just spazzes out. Does rip shit up at close, though. So here we are in the room where we store everything we don't really want. Because it's next to a million explosives. 
Here's an extra crowbar in case you somehow got this far without picking one up. Is that even possible? Is that no. like a Zelda thing? Or? No, it isn't possible. Because right. you need the crowbar to break open that elevator door, which uh, where we saw those scientists fall to fall down an elevator shaft and uh, die. If you'll recall. Yeah, I'm, I'm just, I've seen some weird things now where I just have to ask every time. Like, with the people who beat, like, Legend of Zelda without getting the sword, or... I saw the other day, mutants play, um, punch out, and win it, blindfolded. Well, it's not so hard with fighting games, is it? Because you can just memorize the patterns and well, the yeah, sounds. That's the thing, like, so they, they've, they've just got these weird friggin' patterns memorized, but... Who figures those out? I got, my mate was telling me that, uh... There's uh, quite a competitive blind fighting game uh, community. And there's some fighting games that are better for it than others because they have much better, you know, sound design where every individual... Ow, ow, shit, bollocks. Every individual attack has different sounds and stuff. Mm. Apparently uh, Street Fighter 4 is alright for it, but uh, Mortal Kombat's quite good as well. The new ones. Mm. Ow. Well, Mortal Kombat... Is is quite digital with its combo system. Like you just tap the buttons and the combo happens. Whereas Street Fighter requires like very precise timing. So, so yeah, that sounds better why. to me. I mean, if you're gonna do that with Mortal Kombat, where you just have to, where you press all the buttons at once, why even call them a combo? Yeah, no, it's that's one of the reasons I don't really enjoy it as a competitive game. Because you just gotta you have to you have to decide what combo you're gonna do before you've gotten like you know a quarter of the way through it. My, that was an intelligent opinion for someone who doesn't play fighting games like myself, wasn't it? Hmm. Yes, good for you. Thank you, Daddy. Well, it's it's one of those things where it's a really obvious thing where it's just like, well, that limits that limits my creativity, that limits my capacity to change up the combos and sort of make it interesting. And man, these pipes are doing me great. <laughs> Hope you like green glowing radioactive slime. I sure do. There's quite a lot of it in these right. areas. What? Slime! The river of slime! Thank you, Captain Reference. I always love that line. It's weird because, like, it Ghostbusters really work 2. not outside context, does it? Well, that's, that's why I got, a, I, got, I got a chance to use it in a context. Alright, fine. I don't see what's so great about it in itself. This Dan Aykroyd's a very expressive actor. Okay. Well, I guess he didn't do it justice then. Well, I'm not going to scream at the microphones right now. Well, why not? I mean, uh, I record zero punctuation in this room, so if the neighbors probably already think I'm a complete weirdo. <laughs> that's a valid point. <laughs> See you guys. The things they must hear. Yeah, because I've tried it, like, when I left the TV on and walked out the door into the hall, you can still pretty clearly hear it. Marvellous. So if anyone's walking past my door while I'm recording, that must leave them with an experience. It's like entirely Indian people that live here, though. Racist. No, it isn't. Well, it's not entirely Indian people that live here. I said it's like entirely Indian people that live here. Oh, well, I'm sorry. I guess I should have guessed. Hey, there is a really... Hey, you didn't die. You did. Well done. Good boy. And you. Quite a little uh, dog pile we've got going on here. <laughs> dog, dog pile. Weird looking little things. What oh is your no, a dog. <laughs> I'd better take care of it. Oh bum. This is entirely because of my choices. Whoopsie doodle. Um, and uh, you. Do those explode? Uh, I believe they, they do, do, yes. Yeah, they go. They have a red thing with a picture of fire on it. Well, the, the um, I think in this particular version of the Source engine, whether or not something explodes is based uh, more on terrain than uh, assets. So there's not a fixed asset for barrel that explodes like there is in Half-Life 2. Where you mm. see those red barrels everywhere. Uh, they can be this, they can be like the crate with the explosive words on it, they yeah. can be like a tube, because you design the objects in the world editor out of brushes rather than pre-built assets. You don't really know what I'm talking about, do you? Listeners will. No. You have, um... Hey, I thought you were dead, you faker. Good jump, though. Yeah. He's a good boy. Dead, but still pretty good. 
What is your favorite slash least favorite boss from Dark Souls 1, 2, and Bloodborne from The Bean? Spelled Excuse with? me, that was the three underscore Bethrian. Okay. So, uh. Ooh, fine. So, what would your answer be, Gabriel? Least? Well, I've, you know, I haven't really played two enough to have an opinion. I haven't played Bloodborne at all much, really. Um. Least favorite from Dark Souls 1 is the, uh, oh, what's his name? The two-sword dude, the Caduceus demon. When you just go through the door and suddenly there's like him oh. and the dog on you. On you. What's his name? I, th I think it's Caduceus or Cabadrus, no. Cadubus. Some start with C. C yeah, it's on the, it's on the tip of I know. my tongue. Like, it's just, it's, it's a series of syllables that I know, but I don't go together unless it's this particular fucking... Is it... Hello. Ugh. Is it Capra Demon? Ah, uh, might be it. Yeah, that sounds Cause, cause familiar. Because I, I know he's like a goat-legged enemy, and I know the word was sort of related to Capricorn. Capricorn. Yeah. The goat. Fire, fire. Right, well, this is setting up our objective for this next whole area. We need to activate the power. We need to activate the oxygen and the fuel. Although the only it. clue we were given is fire the rocket engine. And those deilluminated panels there. Uh, am I interrupting something? <laughs> Pretty we sure are. you guys are supposed to be doing something round about now. We are the security. <laughs> these guys fucking suck. One of these guys True is to... supposed to, like, run and attack the squid monster. Arrow up. Oh. Yep, there he goes. Right. Yeah, what a great idea. My god, invincible security will save us all. <laughs> Oh, I love this version of the game. It's bugged as shit. Dun 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 dun. Yeah, you know what? I'll leave you. I'll leave you to it. Let you do your job. This might actually be advantageous. Is he going to distract that the entire time? Seems like it. Because we're supposed to use like grenades and stuff to distract the monster, but he's just going to distract it with his gun. Thanks, security guy. You're a team player. I take it back. Guy's the most useful security guard ever. Let's see if they react to yeah. this. That was a good shot with a grenade. No. Nope. Oh, that guy moved. Oh no, no wait, no, he went straight back though. Well, you know, they have to eventually kill the immortal security guard. Oh, that must be, um... I've sources the best version of the game. Thumbs Fuck you. Thumbs up, Sod. It has a mortal security guard. It's fantastic. Look at it. Well, he is supposed to explode violently. <laughs> <sighs> Take your bets on what the next huge bug's gonna be. Oh, I did it again, silly me. Getting some tightrope practice. That was probably part of, like, Freeman's PhD as well. Tightrope. Well, Guns. Might, as, might as well have been. Gunplay the, for scientists. The stuff they make you do in the hazard course. And like, what the fuck test chambers have you got in this place? So probably Capra Demon and the Gargoyles are probably my least favourite, just because... Capra Demon's quite easy as long as you know what you're doing. I mean, the first time you play, that is literally the enter boss fight, die boss yeah. fight. What's in this room? Oh. Actually, it very rarely gives me trouble these days, because I know you just, you know, run in, dodge roll to the left, get up the stairs, sort out the dogs, and then yeah. take them out at your leisure. And yeah, they're fucking gargoyles just because even when you know you're at such a low level and that's just drop always and a ladder, I am taking no chances. Are you on? Oh, there yes, we go. I am okay. now. Just grabbed it onto the rungs, and our arms were probably completely dislocated because we were moving at near terminal velocity. That's what the HEV suit's for. Um, favorite lead into a boss fight is easily the gaping dragon, even though that boss fight's kind of lame. Yeah, um, that fight's kind of lame because it's not hard. He's just no. got loads of health. No, I, I don't think I beat him second time around. I think in terms of the one that's least fun to do, it's probably Ornstein and Smythe, oh, just because they're so hard. In terms of like badly designed, damn it, where's the monster? Oh, you know, around. In terms of badly designed, I don't know. Maybe um, uh, the prowling mages from Dark Souls Two. It's just a bunch of guys in a room. Right, let's do this properly this time. I quite like the um, the Four Kings, just because every time I go down there, there's a blood stain. Yeah. <laughs> it's like, you haven't been paying attention to the law. Oh, hello. And that always makes me chuckle. <sighs> and you touch the blood stain and you watch someone just go, wee 
Bloodborne I've only played through once. So... Don't really have an opinion. At this point. Although those three, um... The hooded priesty guys in the forest area I remember being a bit of an arse. Hey Mignati, have you played The Legend of Kirandia? If yes, what are your thoughts about it? How it holds up compared against Sierra and LucasArts games from Pallid85. Ooh, that was close. Missed the ladder again, but I grabbed it right before the end. Hmm. Have you played Legend of Kirandia? Hmm, I don't think so. No. Is it a point and clicker? Yeah, I've played. I've played them. I'm trying to think, because there's a few mod ones that I've sort of... Oh, I think I might have bought that and downloaded it, but I haven't started playing it yet. I'm gonna look it up. Are we ready for some totally irresponsible science? Fuck yeah. First we activate this fan. <laughs> and then we, uh... Don't go back, because there's no way back. <clears throat> you, What you're supposed to do is jump to your suicidal death in the fan. And... Oh, it's an old one. Huh. And despite our extreme weight and lack of wind resistance, it'll push us right up to the top of this shaft. Looks good. Might have a look at it. I remember it being totally unmemorable. A blonde chick and a white top and a bandana. I remember there was a very obnoxious maze in it. Oh, that's um, Kyrandia 2 that you were looking at, I think. First one where you were playing a dude. Yeah, I've only really played the first one, and I don't think I ever finished it. So, yeah, they just, I just, they just kind of boring, really. That's my opinion. They exist. Yeah, they're they're there somewhere. No, is it me? Or is there a bit of a catwalk shimmer to the way the zombies walk? Da, 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 da. You see what I'm I mean? a model. You know what I mean? Are you seeing it? They get a sort of sway going on. A bit of a swagger. It's not what I'd a call a catwalk swagger. I, it's that's a stagger probably, swagger. Yeah, that's... Reminds me of when I was sitting at a bus stop and this dude with cerebral palsy was walking down the street and his tremors just happened to sync up with the music blaring out of the strip club. Oxy on, fuel on. Sweet. Now there we can vape. So what are the odds that security guard will still be alive after the map reloads? I'm gonna, I'm gonna go on yes again. Okay. So I'm gonna I'm gonna bet um that the invulnerable security guard from Unbreakable. Yeah. That's what happened. This is this is Unbreakable too. We're just part of his story now. Don't know if I made it clear, but the uh, tentacle monster reacts to sound. Did we mention that? Nope. So if we make a loud noise or like throw grenades away from ourselves, we can distract it. Mm. But uh, that uh, fire shooting security guard seems to be doing the job all right. So good. Thanks, <clears throat> Bruce Willis. Ooh, my wrist. Ah, that's not my wanking hand, but it's an important one regardless. We still... Yep. Yep, there he is. Still holding firm. Probably won't be after we fire the rocket engine, tee hee. He'll live on. He'll be, a, he'll our, be our bodyguard hearts. and our partner for the rest of this adventure. We'll get a blue plaque. Well, much as I'd love to, we have to leave this area via a ladder. Fiddlesticks. Oh, that was the wrong way. Oh yeah, time for one of the horrible jumps. Oh, uh, I actually remember this one. Pixel perfect. Zoom, 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 zoom! Blah, blah. Good job, you. I think you have to crouch to, at the end to sell that one. Oh, and here's another one. Just yeah. when you thought it was safe. Rad. Thanks, game. Sorry, am I interrupting something? What's he doing? He's they like, were good Ooh. men. Ooh, I can't decide. Ooh, ooh. Ooh, I really shouldn't. It'll go straight to my hips. Ooh, nom, nom, nom. It'll go straight to ooh. my exposed spine. Hey, uh, does this barrel smell like cordite? He was not going to register you. I, th I was really sure he was going to maybe turn around when you got up that close, but nope. Well, apparently not. He was, uh, so blinded with hunger, I guess. Do you feel gaming both in story and game design could benefit from more theory being taught to writers and developers from Fizz? I don't know, it seems to be doing alright now. I mean, I don't want to give the impression that I'm down on academia, but the free market seems to be working pretty well. People experiment, sometimes they 
do good things in storytelling and shit. And uh, then people improve on that. Well, I'd have thought maybe a little bit like a director. The, you know, the game designer's job was to sort of take the script or interpret it. And that would be sort of part of their well, that's the work. Is... Oh, oh. That's the trouble, isn't it? Because uh, when you're creating a whole <laughs> world, then a single person can't really be in control of every single aspect of it. Well, you know, it was like filmmaking, and then everyone just decided, that oh, it's the directors now, so... I suppose it's more like directing animation than anything else. Because, mm. uh, you can't just rely on pre-existing locations and stuff. I don't know, there are certainly some, um, elements of game storytelling that are unique to it. Like the fact that the player character is, uh, heavily involved. I mean, I have a couple of, like, sort of private personal rules. Oh, that's yet to be pointing directly at the button, apparently. And, uh, otherwise you're just pushing the wall, you silly. Oh, now well, what you're supposed to do is jump onto that ladder over there. That doesn't look fun. But in Freeman's mind, he jumps onto the pipe, so I just want to see if that's actually possible, or if that's just something he made up for the video series. <laughs> no, he made it up. <laughs> Lies! Well, he, that, you know, made up a couple of other things. I just wasn't sure if that was one of them. Right. Why, why, why do you lie? I mean, yeah, there's a couple of uh, rules for uh, in-game storytelling, like stop, uh, like use the interactivity, don't just make it fade out cutscene, fade out cutscene. Uh, the player character actually has to have some role in the plot by necessity. So something like everybody goes to the rapture sort of falls short. Do you agree with that? I haven't played everybody goes to the rapture. No, I mean the the theory the basic that, premise. The basic premise that uh, the player character has to necessarily have some role in the plot. I'm trying to think of a, like what do you mean by role? I'm trying to think of a situation like a direct role and no, you have to be actually involved in it. Because uh, in Everybody Goes to the Rapture, you're all like finding out about something uh, after the fact. Uh, okay. And you're not actually facing any adversity or anything. You're just oh, like, so listening into stuff. Hmm. Uh, so that's why games have challenge, because you need to have adversity. And uh, adversity needs to affect the, prin the principal characters. One of who. You cannot, you cannot help the fact that the audience is going to identify with the player character. And therefore, you need to play off that, play off that character. Is my point. Am I making sense? Yeah. Nice, uh, uh, nice choice of hiding spot on top of an <laughs> electrified reactor. You go. Black Mesa's collective intelligence will probably go up by average after this. And he even get up there with his newly scientist arms or this ladder. Fine with using ladders off screen, aren't you? You know, the NPCs in Kingpin Life of Crime were fine with using ladders. That was before the Half-Life. Was it using a similar engine? Yeah, I don't know. I think they were using Quake 2. I could be wrong. See, I'm not opposed to a game that's built entirely around interacting just to discover a narrative, but then... You know, you're at the situation where you're leaving the entire weight of the fun of it onto the narrative. Yeah, I so mean, if that you've... works for uh, something like Stanley Parable. It doesn't work for most other walking simulators that I've found. Well, yeah, because it's up to them to now write a really incredibly compelling piece, which... Yeah, of course, importantly, Stanley Parable is more of a deconstruction of the walking simulator, and it, do and it is based around player choice. Yeah, well, that's the, the, the game is between you and the developers to see if they thought of everything you could think of. Well, yeah, that's like the uh, pretty baseline challenge, but it is that it is still there. a challenge. Yeah. Ah, electrified puddles. Do you even got see the me, water? Game. Oh, right, nah, the reflection. That's, yeah, that's the source engine for you. <laughs> Pud puddle was much more obvious in Gold Source because it was just a blue. massive pile of blue paint on the floor. My wrist really starting to hurt. It's, I'm holding the keyboard at a weird angle. Maybe push it a bit forward and further forward in your lap. Like because I've like I've seen a posture person lately, and that's a posture like, person. Yes, was his name Peter the posture person? Yes, really. Peter Princeton the posture person. Peter Princeton the posture person. Yes, Peter Princeton. Po right, bit of a fuck up there, but we're back now. I've heard tell that this game is a little bit buggy. Whatever gave you that idea? I don't know. I blame internet racists. Yeah, we had a bit of a crash there, but. Uh... 
As a surprise, we pay for immortal security guards. Mm. Seems to have resolved now. Is this the ledge we can just walk along? Oh, yeah. Didn't even have to jump across that. What no a silly such luck in here. Whee! The questions are gone. And they're still at it. What? Oh, fucking questions. Be with bear with us in a sec. There we go. Okay. Forgot what we were talking about before the game crashed. Who the hell cares? What kind of pasta is your favourite? What? Uh, ravioli. Yeah. Well, wow, he's really confused them now. Now they're just, now they're just having a dance. The everybody dance now. Can you? Can you? Nope. No. But I think you can still press the button. Would that be prudent while you're in there? Ah, uh, seems not in this version. I guess they fixed that. <laughs> Used to be able to. There was a special spot you could stand and you wouldn't die. Hmm. I know they fixed that, but left this in. I hope you survived the rocket launch. You know what? I believe you will. Guess we'll find out. Is that a tentacle thing above me? Yeah. Well, fucking salt <laughs> engine ladders. Damn you, roof bomb hole. Alright. Alright, fun times will be had by all. See you later. Those uh, effects are all done with 2D sprites. It shows. Yeah, it really does, doesn't it? Oh, uh, is, is he dead? Oh, no. Oh. Bruce Willis, no. Poor Bruce Willis. Turns out he's vulnerable to drowning. And being blasted. space jet engines going off near yes, his face. Being blasted with a fucking rocket. Oh, and this guy's dead as well. Huh. We're we Those are, grenades survived somehow. We are an impish Loki like force. <laughs> Goes around spreading death and chaos. I imagine that's way. why he's moving so quickly, is because he was just like skipping everywhere really fast. La, 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 la. Oh, there's the ladder. Let's see if we can jump through it from here. That'll be fun. Whee! Boom! Yeah! Stunt Croshaw! Spider Croshaw, Spider Croshaw. Spins a web in the corner, sits there by himself. Alrighty. So, uh, this is, I guess, this is the tunnel those tentacles made. Sorry, me a housefly? Kinda gross. Ah, and here's. Oh. Here's his body. Man. Really small body for the tentacles. Yeah. Now, unless I've missed my guess. There is a special present down here. Yes, it's the Magnum. All right. A uh, extremely powerful six-shooter. It's like the... I'm not sure the exact amount of damage. It's roughly the equivalent of maybe one or two shotgun blasts concentrated in a single bullet. Nice. So this is very useful against certain enemies. It's, it, this is a good like, fallback weapon. It's like, right, you're you're more than annoyance. Now you're an obstacle. You're not dying fast enough. Hey, more green sludge. I guess this place just... Hoot. Everyone who works in this area, they just sort of generate it from their tear ducts. <laughs> There's just no end of the fucking stuff. This is where all the toilets empty out. This is an entire underground river of glowing green toxic yeah. slime. It's not... How, how much do you generally make in standard scientific processes? Where does what it all do you, go? What even is it? This empties out to Flint, all we, Michigan. All, all we know is it's radioactive. I guess it all goes there. It sits in a stagnant pool in the bottom of an underground facility. Human waste management. Throw it in a hole. Hope for the best. I dread to think what kind of humans are producing this. Radioactive poo. That's what I think. I think everyone's been so exposed that... You know, everything coming out of them now is just... Alive... We already know a few of Yahtzee's role models, heroes, idols, but not so much about Gabe's. Gabe, who is Stroke R, your hero stroke heroes, and why? That's um, from Resolon 3. My pet housebreak I had for 15 years. Um, uh, uh, you know. Yes? Well, in sort of small but formative ways, my parents, you know, mum for being... Having the stubbornness of a mountain. Duh. Dad for being kind of the opposite of that. 
Thanks for leaving those two first aid kits to land directly on. That's how it works too. You you can skydive and your parachute can like not open, but if you land on like a first aid kit, you're just you're okay. So who was your role model career wise? Um I don't know, I probably don't really have one. My career passion's more You know, I had a feeling you wouldn't. I mean well I tend to you know like I don't I don't find hero you know hero worship I mean, that surely, valuable. Well surely you must have oh, really? I mean but... Uh, having a role model is what's driven my entire career. Oh, I would but say I, it drives most people with... I think it's important to take pieces, but to remember that an individual is still, you know, a human. Well, yeah, but, you know, we take it influence from our inspirations. I mean, you must be going to become a teacher because you have fond memories of your teachers. Well, sure. not really. It's more personal experience. I understand the oh, value. that guy didn't plan that out. Oh, dude. Got a, got a pet. Ooh. I'll gently place this here. Well, of course, you said a few weeks back that uh, you didn't care if your career was ruined by stuff you said on the internet. So I guess it can't be that much of an ambition for you. Well, no, I just, you know, I have a very measured approach to my ambitions and passions. Okay, so if teaching fell short, what would you want to do? What would your passion be? Um... I don't know. Macho I'd Man Randy just... Savage? That's the yeah exactly that. I'd okay, just, you would... just go around cutting promos on people, and I'd probably I'd have to grow a beard. No, oh, oh, you bastard! Right. Oh yeah, that's a gargantua. Forgot to mention. Oh. I've been running on automatic for a bit. He is indestructible with our current weaponry. What well, can well, hurt him? Well, what am I saying? He's always going to be indestructible to our weaponry. Oh. Okay. But there's usually something that you can destroy him with. Environmental doodad. In this case, yes, it's like the last. Pretty much exactly like the last level. Most of this will be spent... Setting up a train yes, to hit him. Setting up the technological device that will exterminate him. See, Freeman is a intellectual hero. <laughs> he uses his environment and skills he as uses a scientist. uses brain to murder. Trouble with switching to the ragdoll physics is I can't tell at a distance the difference between a live headcrab and a dead one. It really is difficult, because I thought... Those, I thought those grenades, that physics on them, they... It's they feel like they feel like Nerf balls. I'm sorry. It is really, hey, let's really. Let's see if these, will, these work. What has happened? Is it on the wall? Oh, there it goes. Hey, come and get me! Holy shit, it worked! Wow, badass. I mean, yeah. I, I probably I like anybody who uses like sort of you know personal strength to overcome a you know bad situation. Like I read, you know, I was doing a read a biography of um, Bayard Rustin. You know, took okay. a great degree of inspiration from him. Well, there you go. There's, um, your, there's your hero or stroke idol, whatever the, whatever the name you just said was. Okay. He was a gay black civil rights activist from well, the so uh, much for 40s being and a, 50s. So much for being a role model, then. You'll have a bit of a trouble fitting that role. Well, you, you know, have to get out some shoe polish and start liking it up the arse. Well, I see his, you know, his, that's the thing about him. His, his role was more than merely the, you know, two obvious factors about him. What the hell's going on down there? Now we've got fucking spitting radioactive slime. Uh, well, that's just a bit of bullshit. Why not? Does, well, does that register or is it just graphic? Why are there no protective barriers around the spitting radioactive slime? There's a sign. I'm gonna get my magnum out for <laughs> no know. reason. Ooh. That was pretty cool. Nice set piece, though. Okay. Okay, there's supposed to be a bull squid in there, but it seems to have fucked off. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Oh hey. I had to eat and run. Hey you. Yeah. There's no like. Aim is a bit dodgy on this. <laughs> Dead. There's no like iron sights or zoom or. No, not in this one. There is in Half Life Two. For this weapon. There. Shooty, 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 shooty. Yep. Pow. Fucking wadoosh. Yes. There. Yeah, eat it. And again. It is satisfying. Only 30 bullets, though, that Aww. you can hold. This is like the Half-Life 2 shotgun of pistols. Whereas the shotgun, you can hold, like, just a lot. Yeah, like, stupid amounts. they got 80 shells now. So here's the map of the upcoming area. Yeah. The soldiers are making their plan here. Stand around here. Shoot uh, shoot anything that moves and throw grenades at each other here. 
What do you think the best female main character in a video game book? Okay. Video and game stroke book? Just video games and books? Yeah, that's Curious. a weird. Yeah. And our silent protagonist, just as good given they can be replaced by anyone from Tokoruini One. Well, surely that is the strength of the silent protagonist, that it can be literally anyone, and that's why they're more immersive. I think a silent protagonist is sort of like a negative space fleshed out by the world surrounding them. Like, I think. Well, hey, someone f didn't know how to store their explosives properly. These are the worst soldiers. <laughs> Highly trained in inverted commas. Wow, yeah. Hey! Ah, uh, excellent. Nice! I think we've uh, stumbled upon the Russian contingent of this invasion force. I thought he was a James Brown fan. Alright, there's another thing. We're sort of trying to shoot at you. Best female character? Um, in games... Books I wouldn't know. I haven't read a... Oh... Well, I do sort of... Uh, You're standing right near a big pile of, like, explodo boxes. They're not as smart as me. A stray I bullet won't accidentally hit it? Oh, no, it doesn't matter now. No, those guys are too accurate. It is, <laughs> it is to their <laughs> detriment. To their, uh, don't hit the exploding barrels narrow. I have made the point that from a narrative perspective, video games and books are probably the closest equivalents because they both require input from the audience. The audience reading a book has to sort of piece together and fill in the blanks with their imagination. And the video game player, of course, drives the, the uh, continuing story. Hey, guys. No, God, yeah, those things just... They, they don't... Huh. Okay, we'll finish this conversation outside, everyone. I've uh, got some contact grenades now, I forgot. Oh, rad. Contact grenades are very, very handy for suddenly changing the situation. Uh, one lone soldier there. Yeah, these are these the... mournful splits. These are the American military tactics. Run up to enemy, stand stock still, and fire constantly at their face until they die. That's all you need. Um, well, not exactly, not the protagonist, but uh, I think I said before, one of my favourite female characters in games is uh, Farah from Prince of Persia Sands of Time, because she's actually got an arc and uh, is part of the central effective love interest story. Um, everyone says Jade from Beyond Good and Evil at this point, which is also which is another good one. Yeah, I'll be on my list. I think, you know, partly because she has she's a deep character, but she has some character moments that wouldn't have worked equally as well if she were a man, because she has this sort of matronly role. Yeah. And that's why that's why you know emphasis on strong female rather than just strong character. Well, is, you know, is that is that misguided? Should we judge them all by the same tack? But you know, it is within the larger context of uh, the larger societal issues of gender. Oh hey, look! Trip mines everywhere! Not anymore. Not anymore. Who designed this lift? <laughs> Gotta press the button and then sprint over to it. <laughs> Hope you don't break your legs. Oh, there's your trip mines. Sorry! Blinky! No! Can you think of any other good female characters in games? Well, I think, like... I mean, I quite like Samus because her silence, I think, is reflective of her alien upbringing. Yeah. You know, I, fi I find her just asocial. That was, that was, um, that's interpretive though, isn't it? Yeah, but I think it's also, like, I, you know, there are tiny little bits. Like, not in, like, I'm, I'm not even going to bring up, a, you know, a, Other M is not what well, I consider an yeah. element of. They characterize Samus with the way she moves and stuff. And uh, in Metroid Prime, you can sometimes see her face reflected on the visor. Well, which that... doesn't tell you a whole lot. But, well, no, but she also... But it gives, at least, even just giving her eyes gives her a degree of personality. Then it was the... There was a good balance between... Leeches! Leeches! Are those doing anything? Yeah, they, like, take off one health at a time. Right. But they're annoying. Better get rid of all of them. Um... Uh, hey. These leeches... Nah, that was bullshit. These leeches... Friends are yours. Because, you know, she wound up sort of looking after that Metroid at the end of the Game Boy one. Yes, how very motherly of her. Um, yeah, and I, f I find that, like, that sort of builds an awful lot of character as a sort of, you know, tear between sort of yeah, they, instinct uh, and, you know, 
nature and nurture sort of thing. Yeah, they were really playing up the mother thing in other M, weren't they? Uh, babies, God Christ, do I love babies. <laughs> I just want to strap like 14 to me. I want to be smothered in Bjorns. If I'm ever not pregnant, stick it in me immediately. <laughs> Don't even ask. My womb is ripe. Fill me with your seed. Wasn't uh, that supposed to electrocute you? Well, well, that is. That will. The other ones aren't. That's angry electricity. Yeah. Uh, I'm sure this works in science somewhere. So, yes, there's that. I've been replaying uh, Paper Mario Thousand Year Door. I think Max has a good emotional strength. And, um. No. Oh, she's the main character from, uh. Yeah. Uh, Life is Strange. Oh, okay. I like Max. Max Payne. Max from Salmon Max. Max Maxine. Lok Max Maxine Lokotansky. Pain. <sighs> I know there's some fun coming. Alright, fun. Fun toys are fun. Die, die, everyone. Oh, fuck. <laughs> Yahtzee, nose funds coming, Croshaw. Yeah, I should, have, <laughs> should have reloaded there. I will this time. You get them on a headshot. Why are you limping? I shot you in the chest. <laughs> Did you see that? That was great. Dad, come and help me with this. What in the red hat's going on here? That reminds me, the um, there's a specific AI routine in the hound eyes, at the dog-like things, where if they're alone, they always run away from you, unless they're cornered. But if they're with friends, they'll be aggressive to, towards you. And I'm, presumably the soldiers have a similar subroutine. What a nifty detail. Yes. Fun to know these things, isn't it? It's also useful if you want to exploit their AI. Shit! Stop moving around! Oh, bum. Ba -bum, ba -ba -da bum All right, let's try that again. You can do it. Come on. That's a big boy. Let's see. I'm an early uh, drown out. Uh, 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 that was a good uh, shot. Yeah, head, um, a headshot will instant kill the soldiers with the Magnum. But uh, it's hard to do. Some of them wear helmets as well, because oh, it's even harder. Sneaky. Right. In an earlier drown out, you had mentioned that you are against inventory puzzles as a gameplay mechanic. Do you mind elaborating on this? What exactly do you have against them? How would you improve them? Etc. From Rasta Graphic. Well, not against them. I just think... Boot. I hope that guy blew himself up. Oh, no such luck. I think, in an, especially in like the adventure game, that the adventure puzzle is basically the equivalent of shooting standard enemies in a shooter. And uh, a lot of adventure games sort of grow over-reliant on them when they should just be a foundation upon which you build more. I mean, most of the puzzles in like a badly designed adventure game is just use key and door, use key and door, just, you know, variations. Go fetch thing, combine three things to make things, yeah. it's just, yeah, cool, because that's all, all, all an adventure game is, is barriers to progression, so it's all yeah. key and door. But some, but the good adventure games, have they've, they've used that foundation, but they've uh, built upon it with interesting things, like the insult sword fighting in Secret of Monkey Island, or, uh, you know, nice character moments and plot moments. You can't rely totally on use key and door, is my point. Because with a lot of um, adventure games, it was uh, a lot of it wasn't wasn't even logic, logical deduction. No. It was just well, it couldn't be logic because then it's fucking easy. It had to just be batshit. Yeah, try to leap on the crazy train that the designer was on. You forgot your fish. Push button to open door. That doesn't work. Why doesn't it work? Because I said it doesn't work. You no. need to pry this thing off. No, you can't use the crowbar. You have to get the toenail clipper, the toenails, and the glue. And you have to spit on a Tuesday. Hey, where did he come from? Yes, that's the problem. Did you walk over here? You're dead. Well, how do you feel about the Sierra approach where finding all the ways to die was part of the fun? Um... Ooh, I don't think that makes up for a, sort of a lazy game, but it can make... A, you know, a, a dull game, a little fun. Spice it up a little bit. Now this guy keeps on chucking. Oh, I'm make it. You better go on without me. Can do. You're no immortal Bruce Willis. Okay. Alright, we doing this thing? Track power's still not on. Because we have to turn on a thing. Oh, fidgets. 
Yes. Did we walk past something? No, it's out where the gargantua is. And we oh. have to get him to chase us to a certain extent. Where is he? He's over there. Oh. Hey, come get me. I'm really scared. Oh no. Oh, you're so big. Shit. Oh Christ, he's right behind me. Oh. Well, he's got to be somewhere. Oh, here he comes. Hey, come and get me. There we go. Okay. He explodes into jibs. Yeah, he does have a die and fall over animation. I found it in the files, but uh, obviously they didn't want to leave a corpse that big lying around. Because it might block a door, or just look kind of silly when you can walk straight through it. Yeah. Which you would be able to. So just explode him into a, like, two square feet of material. <laughs> he was made of air! That's, kind of like the alien from Darkstar. That's how he got so big. Yeah. That's how he was able to maintain a size that large without collapsing under his own weight. Sneaky business. Right. Trams. Now on to, to my mind, one of the weaker parts of the game. The rail system. Thomas, the tank engine theme. Begin. First we have to walk all the way back to... The Rotate track. the doodad. Rotate the track around. Oh. <laughs> he just pissed me off. Tell everyone I love trains. I think you mean I like trains. Oh. That is a internet reference. I don't know that one. Uh, it's some shitty meme bait cartoon series thing I saw once. Oh, okay. Uh, now we're... One moment. Tick, tick, ding! We're on a rail! Yeah, <laughs> okay. I, I see you. That's, it's important to stretch out your shoulders when conducting trains. I'll pull the lever myself, shall I? Shoot him in the face. You clearly can't. Satellite delivery rocket. I don't know where it is exactly, and the old guy was so worried about getting out of here alive, he didn't tell me. No, I'm listening to his important is, information. The aborted the launch, so when you do find the rocket, you'll have to get up to the control room and launch it yourself. Use the Magnum. He said something about a Lambda team needing the satellite in orbit if they were ever going to clean up this mess. Oi. I was going to say stand there. He's standing on... I already pressed it. <laughs> I was really hoping that was going to re-lower it. Right, now don't move. Why, Freeman? Oh, there's a mosquito by you, let me get that. Oh, bum. <laughs> I died somehow. Yeah, yeah, whatever. Just... Yeah, let's do it. I've been waiting for you. One of your Have you? Pals said to give you a message. You're supposed to take this old rail... Yeah, I'll see, nearly five years ago on your at the time yet to be named show and tell podcast, you've said that you're planning to buy a Zentai suit. Have you fulfilled that dream from Grey Twistor? Yes. I don't think I've ever seen you. Wait. Did you come to, um, in, uh, when I was still living with my old flatmates? We once had a onesie party. No, no, I didn't. Because my flatmates were kind of hipstery. Kind of? A bit hipstery. Alright, they were hipsters. And, um... I didn't really have a Still onesie. Are. I didn't really have a onesie, but I did have a Zentai suit. So I wore that. It's one piece. But I was surprised how, um... Liberated I felt wearing it. Because I was entirely covered. No one knew it was me. Except I told Except them. it's clearly... Except it's obviously me. Because when my face was covered, I felt more impish. I felt God, I just want you to get to the point where you're wearing one all the time. Would, there are people in Japan who do that. It's acceptable. I would creep over to people and whisper in their ear, see if you can guess if I'm wearing underpants under this. A brief examination should... I don't know. Because wouldn't you see the line? I mean... Well, you wear some uh, pretty skin-tighty ones and it's hard to tell. Okie dokie. So here we are in the dingy train tunnel. So that's how Yardzi spends a party, is wandering around in a Zentai suit asking people to picture his wang. Just a onesie party, not a every party. That would be eccentric. It's every party now. Every party is a Zentai party with Yardzi. Ain't no party like a Zentai party. 
If you're not familiar with the term, it's uh, the same as a morph suit. Is Zentai the company that makes them? What's the deal with that? Possibly, I'm not sure. Okay. It's uh, just like a one-piece garment that's like a leotard that covers everything, including your face. But it's a porous material, so you can like breathe and uh, even drink through them pretty easily. Ow. Here's, here's the puzzle for this area. We have to move this uh, thing out of the way. We don't, actually, we don't have to. We could just uh, ditch the train. You can actually get through this whole uh, area from ditching the train, but I think that's going against the point. <laughs> cheating, you're only cheating oh, yourself. Oh, this is why Black Mesa trains everyone in firearms usage. It's the only way to flip train switches. The only way to shoot, get, get across the train tracks by shooting all the signs like a fucking Texan motorist. <laughs> Texan motorist. Uh, which way do we want to go? Eh, let's just go this way. Well, there's a lot of things, so that's a good sign. Die, die. <laughs> that one tried to take a bullet for his friend. Gary, no! Bear with me, lads. They're actually die, blind. Yeah, they're well die. trained. Die. Die. Funny you should say that. There's a total conversion mod called Pieces Like Us, which uh, explores the Half Life scientists and the aliens uh, working together and becoming friends. Oh. And you see Hound Eyes living in kennels with little dog bowls, and it's quite adorable. <laughs> so I think it was the same guy who made Sweet Half-Life, which is a really weird sort of anime-inspired Half-Life mod. Check it out if you're into Half-Life mods. Fantastic. Also check out They Hunger. I think I have that. That gets kind of weird. but I mean, the first episode's pretty straightforward, but definitely gets kind of silly by the end. What kind of silly? Like, like um, suddenly the evil scientist is half robot. So, okay, so yeah. And it ends on like a stupid parody song. Wow. Over, over the end credits. So that guy has his, his own I just want to go into space no. moment. I thought you were dead. Not dead enough. Just, oh. just resting. Oh, bum flaps. Oh hey, there's a oh. rocket here. This must be the rocket the security guard was telling us about. Oh, is that what he was saying? Yeah, we have basically we have to make our way to a rocket launch site in order to launch uh, the rocket into space because for some reason the satellite will in some way switch prevent, off the aliens, stop the alien invasion. Shoot one of the barrels. It's something about a portal array. Okie dokie. Whee! Alright, so Yahtzee got his Zentai suit. What do you think of Stephen Moffat leaving Doctor Who and being replaced by Chris Chibnall from Dingo596? I have no opinion. Why don't you address that one? Um... I don't even, I didn't even watch much of no, Doctor Who anymore. Even. I remember when Stephen Moffat replaced Russell T. Davis, everyone was going, Yay, we finally got rid of that guy who wrote the twatties shit. And now everyone suddenly seems to be against Stephen Moffat, from what I've seen. That's because Doctor Who fans are just awful, awful, awful people. Yeah, well, they threw a big fit because Peter Capaldi wasn't a woman or something. <sighs> Ignore those masses of nothing. Anyway, um, who's Chris Chibnall? Chris Chibnall did, like, people are sort of a little bit worried because he wrote, like, what is generally regarded as one of the worst Torchwood episodes ever. Okay. Cyberwoman. Whoa. Which was awful, but... Was it about a cyber woman? Yeah, and like, Google it, because the outfit's as stupid as you could possibly imagine it. It looks like a bad burlesque oh, thing. Oh, I can imagine some pretty stupid things. Don't worry. This'll meet those expectations. Wait, um, it's apparently like it's a did... small world. It's a small, small world. Da, 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 da. I mean, I don't know. If Doctor Who ever actually gets to the point where it's, you know... La, la, la. It's a small, small world. Actually, that is really visually just it's a small, upsetting. Small, small, small world. Oh, I can't even look at that. Uh, um, some people reported motion sickness last week. I hope they enjoyed that. <laughs> yeah, they. are going to be having the vomits. It's a small, small oh, world. Oh, Jesus. This is really unpleasant. Sorry, please continue. I'm just um, using massive. I've got to look somewhere else. Um, what was that? I don't know, he's also written some episodes that I actually like. Like, uh, like, I don't think 42 was bad. I think he did uh, Dinosaurs on a Spaceship as well that was I that actually a, really liked. Was that a Hitchhiker's reference? 42? Um, weirdly, no. 
Like, I think it's because the episode runtime was 42 minutes. And Though Hitchhikers and Doctor Who has been closely linked in, across broadcasting history. Um, Douglas Adams wrote a couple of episodes. He was almost, he was kind of showrunner for a season. Yes. And um, the failed episode Sharda got turned into uh, Dirk Gently. Huh. So yes, how do you feel about Chris Chibnall? Um, I'm happy for New Blood. Generally, I'd be astonished at this point if Doctor Who became something I'd like it to be. Um, and I mean just, just tightening up the episodes and characters. I think it's all you have things make fucking sense. I'm afraid popular culture isn't allowed to be just for 30 year old white men anymore. Cause they're well, it's not even, it's not even like, it's not me, like just, there is, I know loads of female Doctor Who fans, because Doctor Who's always, always, always had kind of a fairly mixed, like, fan base. Huh, I wonder um, if there's something behind these boxes I should be cautious about. Oh well, who cares? Ah! Egg on my face and blood. Human egg. Oh look, the turret and the control panel are in love. Robo gay. Object off your boyfriend. In front of you. Pushed your face to it. And made you touch it. Feed me. See more. Um, largely, I'm just waiting to you know. Wait to see what happens. I mean, I sat through, like, the worst of fucking, you know, Russell T. Davies, who I regard as generally poorer. Um, like, Love and Monsters. God, what else did you hear? was like, the end of time. Like, I always, like, you know, like, the, the conversations we have about who's really responsible in, like, a complex production. Yes. Like. I mean, in TV, the writers do take responsibility over the end product. Yeah, and it's the not- end of time was... All Russell T. Davies. That was he only had four episodes to do that season, so there's no budget like whining. It was literally it was his end, it was his game, it was all his ball to run with, and the end of time is one of the absolute worst episodes. Like that two parter is just fucking terrible. It's everything I really hate about his run of Doctor Who. Just structuring entire episodes around insanely cringeworthy jokes. Okay. Like, that is... I wish I was joking. Like, the, the master race. Like, that's just one of the most embarrassing moments yeah. in Doctor Who. Sounds like a, uh... The premise of a Wizard and Chips comic. I don't know Wizard and Chips. Well, you know... That's kid, a British... Kid, kid, British kids' comics where, like... It would just be like a one-page story and the end result was just like a pun. A, a, wacky, pun. Okay. a wacky pun. A wacky pun of some kind. Alrighty. And, you know... Kids getting over, getting one over teachers and authority figures. That was a recurring theme. Good on them. In British children's comics. I suppose authority at British schools is probably miles away from what I'd understand school authority to be like, especially in those places that you went. Well, it was in the traditional sense of the, you know, the blustering headmaster sort of teacher. Saying, you know, the kind of, <laughs> kind of teacher that would whack your posterior with a cane. Yeah, see, that's... And wear a mortarboard at all times. Was there corporal punishment while you were in...? Um, I remember that my teacher smacking some kids once in primary school. Huh. Upside the head, across the bum. That they've been very, very naughty. What did they do? I can't remember. Probably I just, put a tie on I just wrong remember the, I just remember the punishment English. Actually, it was a female teacher. Huh. I mean, I know the image you had in your mind there. It was probably wrong. Yeah. Well, I thought the kind of schools were just all dude affairs. No, I never experienced uh, corporal punishment in my uh, all boys high school. Because I think, you know, they had more respect for you at that time. It was a grammar school, so we'd all had to prove ourselves to actually be there. Yes. Um, what qualities make a game better for let's playing? And do you ever make decisions to make the games you develop well suited for other people to do playthroughs with? From Lynch, one, two, three. Well, here's my tip for the indie developer. If you do want to gear your game towards let's players, that can be a good way to make some money. You're also a tool, but at least you'll be a tool with some money. Yeah. Well, I mean, once upon a time, this is why you, we got all those half of, half a dozen... Slender inspired and like Five Nights at Freddy's style horror games because they were great YouTube fodder. Simulators. Goat simulator, bread simulator. Ah. Yeah, that, that sort of changed after a while. I think because the uh, competition became too great. 
Yeah, I don't like those things personally. But yeah, if you want to appeal to the YouTube crowd, then doing a roguelike helps, because then everyone gets a different experience. Like, uh, unique to them. Uh, create an environment for funny moments, like the old survival games that do so well these days. Like, um, Ark Survival Evolved, like what we did. Um, we fought a dinosaur. I don't know, watch some Let's Plays, see what's we the popular Let's poo. Play games. I guess Undertale is pretty popular as a Let's Play thing. That's a little weird to me, because it seems like kind of a well, you know, personal narrative-based thing. I think it was just good enough, people wanted to leech off the success. I mean, it was successful before it was a Let's Play thing, mm. because it worked as a story. But there are games that gain success only from Let's Play, like Five Nights at Freddy's. I only played probably about five minutes of that, didn't care for it. No, I, I can't really play it because I can't stand, you know, anticipating a jump scare. I don't mind if they happen without me anticipating it, because then I'm like, oh, you got me. When I'm anticipating it, I'm, I just can't relax. I feel too anxious. I think, wasn't that the point? Well, it's it's sort of, if, if you're anticipating a jump scare, as you are in Five Nights at Freddy's, because it's the only, you know, threat, then the jump scare sort of already failed, because it's supposed to surprise you. Just to keep you on edge. Well, I mean, isn't wouldn't the atmosphere of a you know any kind of horror or thriller kind of game be to build that anxiety to have you sort of you know nervous and you know dreading the the, the inevitable? It's the wrong kind of nervous. Okay. It's a uh, you know worried worried about being startled rather than creeped out. All right. Anxious about the startling thing, and that's that's an annoying um, <laughs> dread. It's not a it's not a fun atmospheric dread. I mean, I'd agree that it's just cheap and boring, but... Yes, it is. Um, trying to get to sort of the heart of the uh, mechanic of it. Why aren't you what dead? What just happened there? Why aren't you dead? Hey! Oh! Oh! Oh, yeah, some of the soldiers have contact grenades as well. Have another one. Uh, oh! There's some fucking... Some tech going on up there. Cheeky buggers. Keep going back and forth through the load screen. Now, I've done a usual time. Not sure how much time we lost to the crash. But, yeah, uh, give it a few more minutes. Uh, let's see if we can find a suitable break point. Yeah, let's see. If you were to put before the Inquisitor from Red Dwarf and told it justify your existence, what could your argument be from Vextra? Well, of course, that episode dealt with uh, a being who went through time and erasing people who had not contributed to history. Not necessarily good or bad people. Just people who hadn't, who uh, had or had wasted not. their opportunity. Exactly. And the judge was you. Yes, I would. Um, well, I would say I would. I would go with the cat's argument. I have given pleasure to the world because I have such a beautiful ass. I go exactly or, rumors. Rather, I have given pleasure to the world. No, I, I've, uh, I've improved some people's days by giving them laughter and joy. And I've been put a whole load of tax money into the Australian economy. A whole lot more than I've gotten back out of it, I'm sure. <laughs> Give me sodas. You've paid my welfare. Slurp. I'll I think a better question was, how would you justify your existence? I told you, you exactly. Been? Pretty much exa Oh, there it is. Look, there's a can. Rimmer's argument. Yeah, pretty much. What else could I have been? Well, I mean, I'd expand my... on that a little bit, but um, largely, yeah. Of course, that yeah. argument worked in the episode. Yeah. Inquisitor said, by their own low standards, they have acquitted themselves. And Lister just refused. Yeah. Lister. That should be my other temptation. Yeah, and then you would get erased. Or I'd have a thrilling event and stop him with... What happened again? I can't remember. I think I might be getting that episode jumbled up. Because there was time travel, wasn't there? Didn't, like... Yeah, that was the time travel episode. Yeah, because didn't... Um, what's his name? Like, Enig... Oh, uh, yeah. Triton went back in time to save themselves and uh, give them the uh, unlock code for the time gauntlet. And then they unmade the Inquisitor. Yes. So all the useless people got sprinkled back into existence. Yeah, that must have fucked things up for a while. Didn't really explore that. Red Dwarf left oh, the look. premise hanging. It's another fucking train. And another very similar section of track. What a climactic moment to end on. Uh, 
Next time, hopefully we get out of these fucking train tunnels. Next see, time. see you then. I did gun fingers, you couldn't see. Gun fingers. I'll do them again, but say gun fingers when I do it. Gun fingers. <laughs> see you next time. <laughs>